So I made a Patreon to fund my art. There's actually some cool benefits for signing up. At the $3 tier, you get early access to my videos, a shout out, and you can read some short stories from my travels. I have two up right now, one about spending 10 days out west with no plan and getting robbed of all my stuff, and another relating my bike touring trip in greater detail about the length of a short story. Some of my best photos are in there as well, so check it out if you're interested. There's also a $10 tier if you sign up for that and you live in the lower 48 of the US. I'll send you a copy of my zine in the trenches where I talk about the experience of riding freight trains 4,000 miles through the US with my road dog. Some of my best writing and photography work are in that zine. If you want to buy the zine outright instead of just signing up, I have a link in my train hopping through the south video. Plus, at the $10 tier, I'll mail you physical photo prints from my travels, as well as postcards or any other zine projects I might write. Not only that, but you'll get to see the schedule of what video projects I'm working on. One major reason for making the Patreon is that some information, like photos, videos, are just too sensitive to put on YouTube, but I still wanted to have a place to put that material, but also not make it so public. I also expect that the channel will grow quite a bit as I make more videos, so this is a way to motivate me to continue to create. I have no interest in making cringy ADHD style edits and soy face thumbnails, so you signing up helps keep independent and original art alive. Anyway, enjoy the video. <laughs> Okay, here's the situation. I'm down to my last $50, so the grimy Euro trip continues. Uh, I couldn't get a hostel, not for lack of trying. So I'm, I'm on very limited income right now. And so I went out to this uh, little woodsy spot behind this parking uh, lot by the train tracks because I thought that would be nice and tucked away and no one will bother me there for the most part. I should also mention someone on uh, couch surfing actually gave me a place to stay but he was a nudist and, and basically required me to be nude with him which I mean at that point just say you're like gay. <laughs> um, but whatever, man. I was like, you know what? I'll explore uh, other options, which is diplomacy speak for I'm gonna go sleep in the woods. Okay, this has been the camp spot for the night. You would never have guessed that it's right by a public parking lot. The camera is probably very shaky because I'm cold as fuck. I've been shivering for the past couple hours. I thought putting on all my clothes essentially would be good enough for warmth. It was not. And you can see by the way I'm shaking the camera. This is not for effect. I'm actually this fucking cold. Uh, <laughs> so gonna just get on with my day. Jeez. Yeah, still beats staying with the nudist though. I'm hoping not to do this again the next night because this is fucking rough. All right, so I'm gonna try not to judge the space too much from its shitty touristed areas and liminal spaces because all those places in every city are kind of shit. I'm just gonna walk around, take the train a little farther and explore some of the more local shit. But yeah, if I wanted to overpay to stay in a crumbled empire with human shit and aggressive beggars, I would have just stayed in the US. Okay, just came from the church, didn't burst into flames, so that's a good start. One, it's gonna be raining for like four straight days here, and two, I probably don't know more than like 20 words in Italian. Now that I'm seeing more of the cutty spots, I can see really how nice and just cool a lot of stuff in Rome is. Just a lot of unexpected things that pop up that are really cool, millennia old. Kinda dig it. 
So I bought these peaches earlier and they're not very good because they're not ripe yet. And I'm kind of seeing it as a metaphor for this trip and that I come here, I'm totally unprepared. I'm not ready. I had one of the peaches earlier. It was really mealy, kind of gross. But over time, as it ripens, it'll get sweeter and sweeter. And hopefully, same deal with just exploring around here. Uh, just the main challenge is going to be finding a place to stash stuff and go out on the town. That's probably going to be the hardest part. Getting less touristy, a little more blighted. Uh, that's usually a good sign for sneaking around. Bad sign for safety, but it's Europe. I don't expect to get shot or anything. I think like the worst a tweaker could do to me here is not the worst that they could do to me in the States. Okay, so the spot is an abandoned stadium, as you can see. The only thing that skews me out is there's quite a lot of people parked here near it. I don't know if this is like a well-known local parking spot or if it's like a tweaker camp spot, but I'm Seeing from the people in the cars, it seems to be more of the first thing. So, just trying to find a quiet place to get in, and then we'll see where to go from there. Because no one's going to be driving in here, at very least. gonna cover me from the rain. I'd love to see a fat fuck security guard try to chase me through this shit. This, this is kicking my ass. I can only imagine what it'll do to him. This was the sleep spot for the night. And actually I found a really comfortable set of cushions here that I used and I just laid them out and made a little makeshift bed. And um actually found a pretty clever spot to stash my stuff so that I can go out on the town. I'll show you in a little bit. So, not that people commonly come here, but I thought, where could I hide my stuff where nobody's gonna find it? And I realized, under these floor panels, it's probably the last place anyone would think to look. So, that's where I'm gonna put my stuff. There's no way you can see my stuff here, but it's in one of those holes. So it's May, it's almost the height of tourist season, and the situation is that all of the tickets for like the whole month are sold out. There's some scalpers out who are like wearing staff lanyards and shit who say you can get in for 50 euro, which is quite a lot. Uh, the guy was talking to a few of us, took us to like a sus alley and said, oh, let me call my friend on the phone, wait five minutes. No official kiosk, no anything, and I was like, yeah, this is just way too suspicious. Okay, just found some ruins that I don't have to pay to walk through, so that's pretty neat. Okay, just had a great time exploring the city. Yeah, it's about an hour walk back to the squat. No public transit, but I'm sure my stuff will be fine. I'll just quickly check up on it, see how it's doing, and then knock out, because I'm quite tired. Should see if I can get a toothbrush. I don't think I've brushed my teeth in like a week since I lost my toothbrush in London. So there's a certain romanticism to walking through European cities at night that is just not present in the States, probably because of all the car-dependent infrastructure. It's really just by design. I will say that the difference between night and day at that stadium is really 
night and day. I mean, in the nighttime there were a few cars parked, but it was relatively chill. And in the day there were parking attendants and just tons of people driving around and it was just so hectic. So I'm glad to be coming back late and uh, hope I don't have too much trouble sneaking in and out. Um, it's easy to take for granted when you've done it before, but you've just gotta not slip up and keep your method. Okay, of course, nothing can ever be perfect. Uh, right now, there's this dude walking the perimeter, and I don't know if he's security or not, but he is a little older, so better to err on the side of caution here, so I'm just trying to wait him out and um, wait for a good opening as far as time. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yesterday night seemed kind of quiet and chill, maybe because of the rain. But today, everyone and their grandma seems to be out. So, that's not great. But I'll give it a few minutes. I'm sure I'll find a good opening time. I already know what I'm doing as far as how to get in, etc. Honestly, this is more comfortable than uh, a sleeping pad. So, that's been nice. And now, I'm going to explore a little bit myself. So, come along. We're just gonna see what secrets this place has to offer, and then I'm gonna see the city. So the nice thing is covered with this roof here. Only issue is it gets a little cold at night. Around like 2, 3 a.m. I usually wake up shivering and have to just uh, put on some pants underneath and then some uh, like extra sweater or something. But other than that, it's been pretty good. I will say, I don't really think anyone's been here since I have. Everything looks pretty much unchanged and untouched. Um, maybe on the weekend the Urbex kids go here, but it's just been quiet, man. If you're old enough that you don't gotta worry about uh, your parents wondering what you're doing, you probably got like a job and other shit to be worrying about rather than going to a place like this. Yeah, so remember those peaches that I got earlier that were like really mealy and gross? Well, now they've had time to ripen and soften and uh, with more time and experience, they taste really sweet and really good. And uh, it's kind of representative of my time here in Rome. So I love a good metaphor. Yeah, only thing I don't love about poking around here is just how freaking dusty I get but I can always wash up at one of the fountains. So I think I'm gonna do that, charge my phone a bit, and then uh, go do some actual legally sanctioned exploring. Oh, and just to give you a sense of what sneaking out in the day is like, look at every MF and their grandma parked outside right now. All right, this is definitely not how these bikes are made to be used off-road, but we are vibing. Back on solid ground, it's not as fun. Drei Farfalloni amoroso, notte giorno di torno girano, delle belle turbando al riposo, ma ci sento a tuo cibo d'amor, delle belle turbando al riposo, ma ci sento a tuo cibo d'amor. Non più vrai qua 
rusty bay panachini Quel cappello leggero galante Quella chioma, quell'aria brillante Quel vermiglio donesco color it's funny, I was telling my friends that I'm just going to be a normie traveler on this trip and uh, wow, <laughs> it is funny how that turned out for this end of the trip. So I'm thinking, what is a public bath for, if not for taking a public bath? Um, I've never done any sort of skinny dipping, streaking, whatever in my life, but as I like to say, it's never too late to ruin your life. Okay, wow, that was refreshing. Just a reminder, this may be my grimy Euro trip, but for some people, this is their life. So always remember that. Stay humble, because you never know if it could be you one day. I wouldn't even say I'm an impulsive or reckless person. Actually, I plan a lot of my adventures out. It's not that I'm impulsive in doing those things. It's just that I kind of push the window a little more and more bit by bit of what I allow myself to do just because I think it used to be a very small window and I've been working on expanding that and for me everything happens very gradually. So what might seem crazy to you now is just things that I've um, <laughs> made acceptable to myself over time. Well, maybe to even a few people viewing, it's normal. But <laughs> you look at the average person and they're like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> How are you living your life like this? You know what, man? When I get the money for the, the five-star hotels and shit, or I can sneak into those, I'll show you what those are all about. But for now, we're in the grime life. Home sweet home. <laughs> Crazy, there used to be actual games here. Whole ass events. People running through the field. Thousands of people cheering. And where are those people now? You know, I do wonder over time, what is the effect of breathing in all of this peeling paint and going by the train tracks, being exposed to all these heavy metals, these toxic chemical areas, potentially asbestos, spray paint, where does this all take me in the end? Probably nowhere good <laughs> long term. I meet so many people who, you know, they, on paper, they seem to have it as far as a certain kind of income, a certain kind of prestige with education. And I ask them, do they enjoy their lives? And funny enough, the answer is often just no. Job's a job, work is work. Uh, I am very lucky in that I generally don't feel that way towards what I do. Those people, I don't know. I, I think they just go crazy over time, just not experiencing anything. I know I would. So this is my way to stay sane, just bit by bit. See some of these fun things, go to some of these cool places. And just, I don't know stave off the inevitable specter of death that awaits us all. People are too afraid, man. Even I get afraid of doing things sometimes. I think when you kind of live your life like this and you're just focused on your basic needs, you sort of appreciate life a little more. When everything's handed to you, nothing ever feels satisfying and you always have to push towards something else. 
when you're out on the road and you're just worried about where do I sleep, what do I eat, you become very goal oriented and those simple little goals like even today how do I clean myself, <laughs> sometimes they can become a big adventure in themselves. Anyway, time for bed. See you in another city. Io non riesco mai a guardarti e dirti quello che vorrei. Mentre annego nei tuoi occhi non ho più pensieri miei. Così un giorno nel tuo bagno e con il tuo rossetto blu te l'ho scritto sullo specchio quello che per me sei tu tutta la luce che non cade su di te è uno spreco d'ombre ecco che cos'è e tutto il solo che il bello è tuo non tocca è distesa arida e tutta terra sciocca